Tom Woods argues that states have the right to defy federal laws. Here's something else you have a right to know about the Constitution. There's a reason we look to the judicial branch to defend the Constitution. Neither of the other two branches of government is going to do it. Congress will do just about anything to get reelected, which usually means doling out cash to anybody who'd be grateful to receive it. And presidents increase the power of the executive branch, even after criticizing their predecessors for having too much power. The current administration has not given up the unlimited surveillance powers of the Bush years, for instance. More about that later in the show. But first, wow, take a look at these images. G20 protesters in Canada essentially causing chaos, not because they want less government, because they want more handouts. And we see even worse images coming out of Greece and other European nations. So what about America? Are we any better off than the rest of the planet these days? And is our government any smaller than it was a year or two ago? We're talking to Senate candidate from Connecticut and author of How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes, a great, great primer on economics, Peter Schiff, economist Steve Horowitz, and political scientist Carolyn Heldman. Carolyn, first to you. Is there any significant difference between the supposedly capitalist United States and the supposedly, shall we say, social democratic European countries these days? Well, sure, there are many differences, but in, in terms of the economy, I think what differentiates us is the fact that we now have a structural deficit problem. Uh, you know, President Clinton ran a budget surplus. President Bush uh, actually increased discretionary spending 48 percent, three tax cuts later, um, in addition to implementing a program, the prescription drug benefit program that we can't pay for, and two wars. You know, President Obama now has a structural deficit problem on his hands that will take years and years to, to shift. Professor, so in that sense... Professor Horowitz, are you surprised to hear uh, a supporter of President Obama and a supporter of Keynesian economics mm -hmm. and a supporter of the Paul Krugman view of the world saying the debt is too high and we might be on the verge of a depression? Uh, I'm, I'm not surprised at all. I mean, you, one look at the numbers will tell you our numbers are rapidly approaching what we see in Greece and other and other places around the world. Uh, the problem, of course, with people like Krugman is he's like a like an old medical practitioner who thinks that that the cure for everything is leeches, and then when the leeches don't work, he says, "Well, we just didn't use enough leeches." <laughs> Peter, so I think that, that you know what what we Peter Schiff, what we the, need to do is to get off this spending and stimulus bandwagon. Got it. Is is the is the concept that you can cure a problem caused by too much borrowing and spending with more borrowing and spending now old hat? Are the big government types starting to recognize that? Well, maybe they are in Europe, but not in the United States. You know, we still don't understand that the stimulus is the reason the economy is so sick. And the more the government <laughs> stimulates it, the more debt they put into the economy, the more they encourage more government, more regulation, more spending, the weaker the underlying fundamentals come of our economy. You know, instead of looking, though, at the protests in Europe, we had to look at China because that's more significant. You know, the Chinese have two and a half trillion dollars of foreign exchange reserves. That's 60 percent of their GDP. I mean, the Chinese are getting tired of supporting our economy. Imagine if we tried to do that here. If we tried to raise a similar amount of money, that's eight and a half trillion dollars. That's $30,000 per person or $120,000 per family. The numbers are mind boggling. Caroline, did I put words in your mouth or do you agree with your colleague Paul Krugman that we are on the verge of a depression? And if you do, why are we on the verge of a depression? You know, I actually, I actually disagree. I don't think that there's evidence that we're on the verge of a depression. Perhaps a double dip recession, given the fact that the housing uh, market, which got us into this mess, um, has not stabilized and li liquidity has not returned to pre-recession levels. But this notion that stimulus spending put us here, that's simply inaccurate. Uh, the stimulus spending only accounts for 10 percent of the deficit. This is a long-term problem. It's one that you, President Obama you inherited. Don't understand when the, go ahead, Peter. You don't understand when the stimulus started. The stimulus that created the housing problem happened under George Bush in 2001 and 2002 when we stimulated our way out of the bursting of the Nasdaq bubble. We keep having bigger and bigger rounds of government stimulus, and it isn't the housing market that caused it. The government, the Federal Reserve, got it, got it. Fannie got it. and Freddie caused Professor those problems. Professor Horowitz, how could anybody claim, That's seriously, hang on, Carolyn. Professor Horowitz, how could anybody claim seriously that the stimulus has helped us? Well, President Obama's been in office for a year and a half, spent a trillion dollars. We still have 15 million people out of work. 
Right, and, and in fact, unemployment still remains higher than Obama's, the Obama administration said it would be if we didn't have a stimulus. So, I mean, clearly that, that this isn't working. Yeah, it's only a small part of the total debt, and, and, and Mr. Schiff's absolutely right that, that, that this goes back a, long, a longer way. Okay. But I think the real problem is, is that even the things that the Obama administration is doing that aren't expensive are making the business climate much worse. Uh, by the health care reform and the rest have just created an Got environment it. in which nobody wants to invest because they don't know what's coming next. Got it. I'd like the three of you to stick around please that was rioting at last week's G20 meeting a sign of things to come not just in America but in the entire world find out what the president's doing about it and why our panel of freedom fires is not happy with it next if you could remind us why the stimulus spending was a good idea it's hard to argue sometimes things would have been a lot worse right it, it, you know so people kind of say yeah but unemployment's still at 9.6, yes, but it's not 12 or 13 or 15. People say, well, you know, uh, the stock market didn't fully recover. Yeah, but it's recovered more than people expected last year. When asked at a town hall if all the recent stimulus spending is working, President Obama gave a 14-minute long answer, which included the claim that all economists say, yes, the <laughs> stimulus is working. A panel of freedom fighters might not all agree with that. We're talking to Connecticut Senate candidate and author of How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes, Peter Schiff, economist Steve Horwitz, and political scientist Carolyn Heldman. Carolyn, can you defend what the president just said? Are things actually better off after a trillion dollars worth of printed money being spent out there in the past 18 months? Absolutely, Jed. So we can look at employment. The CBO estimates that 2.5 million jobs were saved or added to the economy. Uh, in addition to that, there's a 2 to 4 percent boost in GDP as a result of the stimulus. So the notion that it's done nothing is simply inaccurate. Peter Schiff, what do you say about this? Well, the stimulus has done a lot of harm. In fact, it's an economic sedative. The fact that it caused a temporary boost in GDP as we spent all that borrowed money, now it means that not only do we have to address the problems of the past, but now the new problems created by the stimulus, we are deeply indebted than we, now than we were before the stimulus. We have more problem. All of it's always stimulated was government spending and consumption. And we dug ourselves into a deeper hole. Real economic stimulus comes from savings, production, and investment, and we're inhibiting that. Professor Horowitz, in a recent poll by Rasmussen, in which the American public, a scientific sample was asked, which uh, worries you the most, terrorism or the debt, they finished in a tie. Are you surprised that in 2010, the American public is finally worried about how are we going to pay back $14 trillion? Uh, I'm not surprised, right? When it gets up to $14 trillion, that, that's a lot of money. And folks are seeing their own budgets having to be cut, and they have difficulty understanding how they're cutting their own budgets, while at the same time, government keeps spending and spending and spending. And the real problem here is that you can always boost GDP by spending money, but that's the problem with GDP. The real problem we face right now is, is as Mr. Schiff said, getting production going again and shifting resources out of the areas where they've been misallocated for the last 10 or 20 years. Caroline, so what do you say to the 15... not going to solve the problem. What do you say to the 15... 15 million people that are still out of work, notwithstanding all this money that has been spent, or the people that got part-time jobs for two or three months under the stimulus spending, only to go back on the unemployment rolls when the government's cash stopped coming in. Well, Judge, I think the government has done what it can do. Consumer confidence has gone back to nearly pre-recession level, so consumers have done what they should be doing. I think the issue here is that businesses are stockpiling $1.8 trillion, meaning that they're not hiring. They're concerned uh, about a possible double dip uh, recession, and as a result, they're, they're making that happen. So I think that businesses need to step up and start hiring because consumers, you know, we're out, we're shopping again. Our real wages have increased slightly. Um, I think that it's important that businesses do their part. Peter Schiff. Well, that's the You're problem. Yeah, not, to because consumers have to stop shopping. We've shopped too much. We're broke. They have to start right. saving. That's the problem. That's the only way to restore the economy. But every time the right. consumer starts to save, produce. the government tries to stimulate them into spending when they're already broke. Professor Horowitz, were you surprised that the president seemed embarrassed last week in Canada when he reluctantly said we've got to start uh, slow down spending and every other national leader there said we've got to stop the spending at the rate we're doing it.
Yeah, I mean, we're, we're the outliers now. We used to be the outliers on, on the other side, but we're the ones who haven't recognized the fiscal reality in front of us. If we don't get a handle on this situation and do it soon, we are going to end up walking down the same path that we've seen in some of the European countries. He should be embarrassed. Peter. Well, I think we're going to be work, walking down the path seen in some of the Latin American countries or maybe in Zimbabwe. <laughs> and, you know, the national debt isn't just $14 trillion. That's the tip of a huge iceberg. Right. What about all the off-budget debt, like the $6 trillion we're on the hook for for Freddie and Fannie? What about all the contingency liabilities for Social Security, Medicare, and now this new Obamacare? Got it. Got it. Carolyn Heldman, Peter Schiff, Steve Horwitz, thanks for sticking with us.